200 gallons of seawater will cost you around $200 at your local fish store. 200 gallons of homemade seawater will cost you around $85. That means for every box of seawater that you buy, you will save $115. So now let's add in a good RODI filter for $200, a heater and a power head for $65 for a grand total of $265 initial investment. That means that you will start saving money in the long run around gallon 450 or your third box of seawater. So do your pocketbook a long-term favor and save a ton of money by making your own salt water. A big thanks as always to our sponsor, Coral Vault. If you are in the need of premium imported or what you see is what you get aquaculture products, then go to coral-vault.com. Browse their huge selection, not only of livestock, but of dry goods and of artworks. Check them out, coral-vault.com. Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank in collaboration with Marine Depot, bringing you week 15 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks. How to make salt water. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to My First Fish Tank and to Marine Depot, and links to the blog, the entire playlist, and all the gear we talk about in this video are in the description below. Let's just start out with all the gear you're gonna need, and the first and most important of which is gonna be some sort of seawater mix. I've used most of the commercially available salts out there from Red Sea Coral Pro to the Red Sea Blue Box. I've used Instant Ocean, I've used Fritz, RPM, the Tropic Marin salts, most of them I've used, and to be honest with you, they've all worked just fine for me. But to keep it simple, if I was to give one recommendation, I would probably choose the Red Sea Salt, the Blue Bucket. It's readily available and it's worked really well for me for well over five years. Next up, you're gonna need some sort of either bucket or trash can. If you have a small tank and you're mixing less than five gallons of seawater each time, you can just pick up a Lowe's or a Home Depot five gallon bucket with a lid and that's gonna work fine. If you have more tanks or larger tanks, I'd recommend either buying the Brute Trash Can 20 gallon or 32 gallon food grade and be sure to pick up the dolly that goes along with it, even though it costs something like 30 to $45, because when you have several hundred pounds of water and you're trying to move it from one location to another, the dolly will save your life. Trust me, I went years without a dolly and I regret not using a dolly. For RODI filters, there's really a couple I'd recommend and they both work just fine. On the least expensive end, you could pick up the Marine Depot Clean Water four-staged advanced RODI filter. And if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, I would go with the Aquamax Puritech four-stage deluxe RODI filter. Both of them are available at Marine Depot. And as for a power head to help mix up that seawater, for me it's a no-brainer. I would go with the NUA MP1200. Not only is it great for mixing seawater, but you will find so many other uses for it around the house. And actually, I think I made a video on this, so I'll put a link up here and in the description below. For heaters here, you don't need anything fancy. Just go with an inexpensive glass heater from Amazon or Marine Depot sells three different kinds. They sell the Eheim Jaeger, the Via Aqua, and the Hydor. Any of those is gonna work fine. Just make sure you get the right size for the container you're gonna be using. And the last piece of the puzzle you're gonna need is a refractometer. I just recommend going with the refractometer over a hydrometer because it's super accurate and for around $50, you're gonna have a piece of equipment you're gonna use all the time that's gonna last you probably your entire career in this hobby. How to make salt water, step number one, buy your gear. We just went over all the gear you're gonna need. You can pick it up at Marine Depot or you can pick it up wherever you want. Buying used gear can save you a lot of money or you can put stuff together yourself by going to Home Depot or to Lowe's. Wherever you get your gear, get the gear you're gonna need to make salt water. It will make your life easier and it will save you tons of money in the long run. Step number two, make or buy RODI water. If you don't wanna buy an RODI filter quite yet, you can always buy RODI water for around 50 cents a gallon from your local fish store, or you can pick up distilled water from your local grocery store. Step number three, fill up either your bucket or your food grade trash can with RODI water, leaving several inches at the top for adding in the salt mix. Step number four is grab your heater and your power head and place them inside your container. For your power head, I'd recommend attaching it to the side of the container or placing it on the bottom of the container on its side. That way you get a good circular motion for stirring up the salt. 
and for your heater, set it to match whatever your display tank temperature is, 76, 77, 78 degrees. If it's plus or minus two degrees, it's probably not a big deal, but you don't want the water temperature of the newly made seawater to be that much different than your display tank because it could shock your livestock and stress them out, which could lead to death. Step number five, following the directions on your seawater mix, estimate just how much salt mix you're gonna have to add. Using a measuring cup, slowly add the salt into the water. If you don't have a power head for this, just make sure you're constantly stirring your container so the salt mixes really well. Take your time adding the salt here because adding too much all at once can lead to precipitation. Not only can that mess with your calcium and alkalinity water parameters, but it can also coat your heater and your pump, reducing their life. This, this might seem really silly, but I use a 32 gallon trash can and I know it takes 14 cups to make a salinity level of around 1.026. And so many times when I'm scooping the salt in, I totally forget what scoop I'm on. So I have now started saying the scoop number out loud, which may seem silly, but when I go one, Two, for some reason, my brain can remember it much better when I say it out loud. So if you have that problem, consider counting the scoops out loud when you're doing it. During the mixing process, it's totally normal for the water to be a bit cloudy. And if you're using a small container, you will probably notice that the water gets really warm to the touch. I have no idea what sort of chemical reaction is going on, and if you actually know what it is, maybe put a comment down below and illuminate all of us. But when you are mixing seawater, there is a chemical reaction which raises the temperature of the water. That's normal, don't worry about it. Step number six is test the salinity of the seawater. You don't wanna test it immediately because you wanna give that newly made seawater time to mix up. So maybe wait five to 10 minutes before testing it for the first time. Using your refractometer or salinity probe, test the salinity of the water. Obviously, if it's too salty, just add a little bit more RODI water, wait a few minutes and test again. If it's not salty enough, add a little bit more salt, stir it up, wait a few minutes and test it again until you get it just right. Step number seven is just to wait. It's best practice to wait several hours, up to 24 hours, for that salt water to completely mix. What I do is I just make a brand new batch of seawater every time I finish with the water change. That way, not only do I know it's ready for next week, but it's also ready in case of emergency. If you're mixing up a brand new batch of seawater and you have to use it right away, just make sure that number one, you mix it completely and the water is totally clear, and then closely inspect the bottom of your container to make sure there aren't any clumps. Because if you're adding in clumps or unmixed salt, it could damage sensitive corals or hurt your livestock in general. Step number eight is actually just a warning. Never add salt mix directly to your display tank. Now, if you're setting up a brand new tank and there's nothing in it, then of course you can do that. But as soon as you have livestock in it, never add sand directly to your display tank. It can hurt your corals, your inverts, and even cause a lot of stress for your fish, which could kill them. And step number nine, the final step for making seawater is learning how to store your seawater indefinitely. You can make seawater ahead of time and store it for long periods of time as long as you follow a few tips. The first tip is to make sure you place an airtight lid on the container. That way you avoid any sort of evaporation because if you just left the top open, water would evaporate and that seawater would get saltier and saltier over time. It's always best to use a dark container and preferably a container that doesn't let any light in because this will reduce any potential from light causing unwanted algae growth. Store your newly mixed seawater in a cool location and I would even consider storing it with both the power head and the heater inside so that the water is aerated, always mixed up and at the correct temperature. So whenever you're ready to do a water change or if there's an emergency, it's ready to go. Well, that's it for week 15. Be sure to join us next week for week 16, where we talk about how to add sand and salt water to your tank and setting up your return pump and your filtration. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to Marine Depot and to My First Fish Tank, and sharing this series with a friend. Links to our social media pages, all the products we mentioned, and the blog are in the description below. And until next week, happy reefing. Be well, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next time.